People who grew up rich but turned out poor What is your story? Dad went to jail for housing fraud in 2010. I was in my teens and $10 million were seized. Went from a 800,000 house to homeless in four days because our family didn't even know he'd been in court for two years. Oh geez dude I feel so bad for your family at that time, what was it like after that? Went from ramshackle app to apartment I was the class clown in all my new schools that went home alone with no real friends. Mainly because I never tried and didn't want people to see where I lived. Got good grades and went to a top 10 college for engineering. Tried to be social to make up for lost time. Joined a frat, got the shit kicked out of me in hazing and now I'm addicted to nicotine and probably alcohol. Hey man. Just speaking from my experience, the smartest decision I ever made was quitting drinking, and I made it about 10 years later than I should have. It's really easy to lose entire decades, and once they're gone, you can't get them back. Most people with a healthy relationship with alcohol never stop to question if they have a drinking problem, so if it's even kind of in the back of your mind please consider at least trying to take a break and reassess. Again. Just speaking from my perspective, and everyone's journey and relationship to booze is different. Was it tough? What was your experience getting sober like? Did you feel different afterwards? Edit, wow, it's so heartening to see that so many others have clawed their ways out of that pit. Thanks for the replies. My grandparents were very wealthy so they bought my parents a house and basically supported my family. Even paying for my school tuition, I wasn't aware of this. Because of this my parents were lazy and never really had jobs. They were always at home and I didn't find any of this unusual. We had extravagant vacations and I remember being given everything I'd ever asked for. But my grandpa died when I was about 10, grandma following suit soon after and all his kids started fighting over the money. I'm pretty sure they're still fighting. Anyway. Soon half the lights in our house didn't work, our TVs were all broken and our cars broken down and barely usable. I was wearing the same uniform all throughout high school, and as a teenager I wore nothing but hand-me-downs. My allowance decreased instead of increased year by year. There were no more vacations. But my parents wasted the rest of their savings on appearing rich, buying fancy jewelry and clothes for themselves and shit, racking up credit card debt. Then they'd host parties for friends in expensive restaurants and I'd feel so angry because back home we'd be eating nothing but canned food. It honestly scarred me so much that my only goal is to become financially stable, and I plan to stay employed without ever retiring because I don't want to be like them, jobless and stupid. I grew up rich. I wouldn't say I'm poor but I don't live near as well as my parents. I grew up in a house which Silla has now valued at $5 million in a very wealthy area. My mom never worked. My dad had an office and employees and besides my mom, three ex-wives. My grandmother and great-grandfather came from extreme wealth. And really, it just turned out that my dad, though he was pretending for years to run a business, have an office and be a big important person, never actually made any money. All of it was drawn from a trust that had been set aside for him, and finally when it went dry, it was over. When my parents passed I inherited about $13,000. May, that's life. I have two siblings that roam the earth thinking there's still something they can capitalize on from all this, some privileged bank of connections they can make withdrawals from. But I've accepted that I'm just ordinary folk. Life doesn't owe me anything. Parents quit a good job cause my dad got tired of the daily repeating pattern, it bored him too much to spend his life on it. My dad got tired of the daily repeating pattern, it bored him too much to spend his life on it. That's how we went from lower middle class to homeless. My dad decided he needed a break for a while. He quit his job, disappeared for a year or so, and left us three kids, all minors, to fend for ourselves. Our mother had died years before, so we didn't have another parent to rely on, no drugs or alcohol was involved in his decision, either. He just stopped being a parent one day. Similar story here. 
My dad left a good job, small town newspaper reporter, paid all right at that time, enough for a family of three to live on one income, and never found regular employment after that. My mom had to pick up the slack, they divorced, he still expected to be waited on even though he was no longer the breadwinner, and he ended up being supported by his parents for the rest of his life. That's how my family went from lower middle class to living in social housing, surviving on a mix of government disability benefits and part-time work, when my mother got cancer. Duck what are all deal for your mom? It's a pretty short and simple one. My parents are absolutely loaded. My dad was a VP at a major engineering firm, and while they're retired now, they're sitting on about 4 million in the bank and maybe 12 million in investments and stocks and the like. They're also scumbags. My mother is an abusive monster who beat the shit out of me growing up, and my father is an alcoholic who couldn't stop her. So after college, I made it clear I don't want their money, or anything to do with them. They use money as control if they're helping pay for something then they think that gives them broad control over me. So they can go to hell. I've worked for a clean power company my whole adult life, and I've gotten myself to about $60,000 a year. Of course, the pandemic has temporarily turned my job off, but I'm proud of where I've gotten even if it's much lower than how I began. My cousin's wife grew up in a wealthy family, her father officiated their wedding. They were old money inherited from a few generations of grandparents ago. After years of traveling the world and just mismanaging their money it's all gone. Just decades of spending millions adds up. My father was in the NFL in the 1980s and early 1990s. We lived quite well during my childhood, large house on a golf course, four cars, private school, etc. But once he retired it was over almost immediately. Not because he was financially imprudent but because it was clear he might not ever earn another paycheck in his life at age 33. So we moved away back to Michigan in a nice, if not flashy house, and lived a very average suburban existence within his means. My parents are still together and have no regrets about slowing the spending down post-career. If I had been older and used to that lifestyle as a teenager as opposed to a child, I can imagine I'd have been a ducking brat about the whole ordeal. Your dad did better than literally 23 of NFL players. Sure, the really famous ones, Peyton Manning, Jerry Rice, etc., remain wealthy their whole lives but the majority actually wind up flat broke. They don't save, they get divorced, and their cousins bleed them dry. So good for your mom and dad for being so responsible and disciplined in an environment that isn't known for those qualities. The NFL is shit with post-career health care, since you have to be on a roster for enough games to fill three complete seasons, not sure if you have to be listed as active for all those games, however they do at least bend over backwards to try to teach young players the benefits of saving money and living responsibly. Tons of presentations to rookies, counseling available plus all the stuff to help them avoid making idiotic mistakes like a free 247 car service so they don't have to drink and drive, in the days before Uber was a thing, and yet, so many still manage to duck it all up. Such a shame. It's human nature. A lot of athletes grew up poor. If you suddenly give a poor person a giant pile of money it takes an unusual amount of character to not spend it. This is why lottery winners go broke despite obvious steps they could take to be secure for life. It's a feast or famine mentality growing up poor. Like, if you have money, someone will try to take it from you, so you better spend it before that happens. It's hard to break that kind of conditioning. My dad was a millionaire cheated on my mom my mom left him he had a mental breakdown lost everything still trying to get her back 10 years later. This is a beautiful poem. Until I was 10, my family seemed to have an ideal life. Beautiful houses in a very wealthy beachfront town, expensive cars, summer camps, and everything else a kid could want. My dad was a dentist and my mom was just starting work as real estate broker. She said her money was fun money. Dad paid the bills. 
But, unbeknownst to us, Dad didn't pay the bills. He was living a double life with our babysitter. They even had their own house. My parents split and weeks later, the bank took our house. We, my mom and us three kids, were out on our asses. My dad has taken whatever was left of the money, not much, and destroyed my mom's credit with bankruptcies and delinquencies she didn't know about. We struggled for many years and had lots of help from family friends. There were many birthdays and holidays with no gifts and lots of pasta for dinner. My mom could stretch a dollar pretty well since she had grown up with not much money. Now, 30 years later, my mom has become successful financially through lots of hard work. My dad is still with my old babysitter. He retired, he was forced to sell his practice because of lots of bad business practices, and is now working a minimum wage job and living in near poverty. Karma's a bitch. Edit, I have nothing against pasta. My point was that pasta is, relatively, cheap. No more steak and potatoes. Thanks guys. 30 years later, my dad is still with my old babysitter. This is by far the most surprising part of the story. Yeah, I mean, not many 30 plus years old people still have babysitters. Went from very well off to middle class. Grew up in Peru. My family was involved in government and acting. We appeared in a few shows. My mom was the face of a detergent brand. My sister was the face of some brand of cereal. I was doing commercials weekly. Being well off in a Latin American country was dangerous in the 90s, still is, you have no idea. My mom had an armored car, we had shared guards with the other houses in my small block, we got followed all the time, robbed at gunpoint. Moving to America to be safe meant losing it all and starting over, we cried in the plane, my mom even worked at Subway with my sister so we could get by. Now we live a nice secure life in Florida and I wouldn't go back. My family used to be similarly targeted by robbers. In 1980s, there was a mob group that had attacked our family and killed one of our guards. The guard was old, kind of just like a gatekeeper. He had dreams which he used to share with my dad. His dream was to make his son successful enough to own a house like our family's. He had been with our family for almost two decades and was like really trustworthy. A lot of people remember him. We had paid for his son's college and living. Anyway, the robbers, actually murderers, couldn't steal anything but they were later arrested and executed on orders of my granddad on charges of murder. My granddad was the judge himself. It must well have been really satisfying for him to give the verdict. My dad had an oil and leather business. Edit, yeah, he was the judge presiding over that case. It was a panel of five judges. Now the rules have changed and it's not allowed. 